स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया So then let us look at another example. So the second example that I have today is the following. We need, we want to look at the motion of a simple pendulum in the form of a holonomic, uh, in the form of a constraint problem with holonomic constraints. So we want to see the motion of a simple pendulum of mass m of mass m and length length l okay so so let us just say that my vector q of t denotes the position vector so i am talking up about a problem in 2d right so i am talking about a problem in 2d this is the position the position of pendulum the position of pendulum at time t position of pendulum at time t where i denote so this is a general notation i denote q1 as my horizontal component and q2 as my vertical component right of this motion okay so further we uh, assume that the motion is restricted in a given parameter range so the motion of the pendulum the motion of the pendulum pendulum is for t from t0 to t1 right and further which means in our case our action integral or which is the total energy integral comes out to be an integral from t0 to t1 uh, m by 2 of mod q bar dot square plus plus g times q2 okay of dt note that this particular quantity is my kinetic energy of the system and this particular quantity which depends on the vertical component of the position is the potential energy okay here we have absorbed it does not really matter where whether we have m here or not the second scenario because m is a constant of the problem so we can very well assume that m mg or m or or g as one of the constants okay so so now we, well we have a pendulum note that we have a pendulum which is which is rotating which is rotating such that the total length of the pendulum is l so the pendulum so that also brings in an additional constraints on the motion of the pendulum so th the motion is subject to the constraint subject to the constraint such that the sum of the the square of the x component and the square of the y component which is q2 minus l right so q2 minus l so q2 is so q2 is this quantity and q1 is this quantity here the the horizontal cons, uh, component so q1 square plus q2 minus l square the total length must be equal to l square right so this is my this is my holonomic constraint Okay. This is my holonomic constraint and then further what I have is that uh, so, so I am ready with my so notice that I am ready with my functional the functional is is an integral with uh, with an integrand containing two variables subject to this constraint which also is a constraint of for two variables right. So, I can find the necessary condition for an extremal 
by solving my Euler Lagrange equations and I can I am going to directly write the set of two Euler Lagrange equations uh, for each of the components which are as follows. So, q 1 double dot plus 2 lambda t q 1 is equal to 0 and the second equation is q 2 double dot minus g plus 2 lambda t times q 2 minus l is equal to 0, right. So, so what I have is we have set of two equations here, but three unknowns q 1, q 2 and lambda, but we also have the holonomic constraint which is the box constraint here. So, I can solve let me call this as let me call this a system of equation as 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 double star because this box constraint is my constraint star. So, star and double star can in a sense be used to solve solve for three unknowns which is q 1, q 2 and lambda. So, we as you we, we end the discussion in this in this example by saying that these two these set of three equations are fully solvable for the set of three unknowns q 1, q 2 and lambda. So, then let us look at another example. Okay. So, let us look at another example that is geodesics in 3 D. So, we are revisiting the same class of problems with different setups. So, geodesics in 3 D. Okay. So, now let us, so I am going to pose this problem of geodesics in 3 D such that the point lies on the surface of the sphere. So, my equation of the sphere itself will serve as the holonomic constraint. Right. So, let me call the constraint g to be uh, let me call the constraint to be g and g be a smooth function. When I say smooth function, I, I necessarily impose all the derivatives exists, all the necessary derivative exists such that my Euler Lagrange uh, equations are uh, are solvable. Okay. So, this this is so, g be a smooth function of these three variables x, y, z and further if we assume that we are not in the scenario of abnormal problems, then, then an equation, an equation of the form g of x, y, z equal to 0, 0 describes describes the surface of sphere, surface of sphere, sphere of radius, radius 1. Let me call this as my surface sigma. So, it describes the surface of sphere of radius 1. Let me call this as sigma. Okay. So, so uh, let us assume that gamma is the curve that we are after or the extremal curve uh, and let me in fact, let me begin with by saying that gamma be any curve on the surface of the sphere. So, gamma is a curve curve let me call this curve in 3 D. So, what do I mean by a curve in 3 D? we are saying a curve which lies on a three dimensional surface. Okay. So, curve in 3 D described by described by uh, described by this this function r of r bar of t which is x of t y of t z of t such that x y z follows the equation uh, follows the equation of the surface of the sphere. Okay. So, t is from t 0 to t 1 and and the arc length the arc length gamma the arc length of gamma of gamma is defined by this functional j of x y z 
to be the integral from t 0 to t 1 of, of the absolute value of gamma prime d t absolute value which is also equal to the integral from t 0 to t 1 of square root of x prime square plus y prime square plus z prime square d t. Okay. So, this is the functional that we have to optimize that is the arc length of arc length functional. So, the geodesic on sigma is going to be the extremal of this arc length functional. So, geodesic on sigma is the curve with endpoints uh, p 0 p 0 which is gamma at t 0 and p 1. So, I call these points p 0 and p 1 this gamma at these parameter values t 0 and t 1. Okay, so, let me so, I can directly go to the description of the extremal by by start starting to solve the Euler Lagrange equation. In this case, uh, in this case my uh, my function for the Euler Lagrange. So, so which means so which means my f uh, for my Euler Lagrange equation or the function that we need to be substituted for our Euler Lagrange equation is going to be. So, if I call this as my as my L and I call this well I have not written G. Uh, so, so, so G here is so G here is G of x comma y comma z is nothing but x square plus y square plus z square minus 1 right. So, this is the constraint that that is set equal to 0 if I have that the point x y z lies on the surface of the unit sphere right. So, my f is L minus lambda of g g of t right because x is a function of x y z is also a function of t. Okay, so, so, which means my Euler Lagrange equation are as follows. So, which means that d d t of partial partial q k dot right uh, q k dot minus partial q k partial partial q k of f is also equal to is also equal to the set of following equations. We break it down into the set of three equations one the first one with respect to x, the second with respect to y, the third with respect to z. So, d d t of x dot divided by well have I used dot or have I used prime? I have used prime. So, here here my my prime denotes the derivative with respect to t right. So, let me continue using my continue using prime. So, x prime divided by square root of x prime square plus y prime square plus z prime square ok plus lambda of t times del g del y this is equal to 0 times and then the second quantity that we have is d d t of z prime divided by square root of x prime square plus y prime square plus z prime square plus lambda t of del g del well. The first one is del g del x del g del y and similarly, I can continue by writing the third well this is my second component. So, this is with respect to x, this is with respect to y component and then the final one is with respect to z. Okay. Del g del 
z set equal to 0. So, this is my Euler Lagrange for the z component. Now, uh, we see that we have three unknowns x, y, z and the fourth unknown is the lambda and we have three equations plus the isoperimetric uh, the holonomic constraint. So, technically we should be able to solve and find the solution x, y, z. However, we can see that the solution is extremely complicated. So, let me let me club, let me club, let me call this uh, set, let me call this set as A. So, my, my set A can be written in a more general format. I see that my system of equations given by A, there are three equations in overall, is a second order ODE of the form u double prime x prime square plus y prime square plus z prime square minus u prime of x prime x double prime plus y prime y double prime plus z prime z double prime divided by x prime square plus y prime square plus z prime square. Okay, this is also equal to 2 lambda u where where my u is x y z. So, plugging in the values of u respectively will help me to generate each of these equations described by the set A. Right? So, note that note that this is a second order differential equation. For each u, this is a second order differential equation, which means which means it has it has two linearly independent two linearly independent solutions two linearly independent solutions but however there are three equations overall for u equal to x for u equal to y for u equal to z right so what i said is the following so equation equation a holds for for u equal to x, y, z. So, are there 6 linearly independent solutions? The answer is no, we have 4 variables. How can there be 6 linearly independent solutions? Right? So, there cannot, there cannot be 6 linearly independent solutions, right? which means that there will be a relation which relates at least 3 variables together right and then the other two the other three variables are separate so at least there will be one relation so which means uh, so if my three variables are x y z so z can be expressed in the form of x and y so x y z are linearly dependent right so so given the fact that there cannot be six linearly independent there will be at least one relation so, there is at least one relation between between three variables, so that the system is properly defined. So, let me call those three variables without loss of generality the three variables could be x, y, z. So, which means that what I am saying is that a x plus b y plus c z must be 0 or z is a function of x and y c not 0 right so so which means well so what is this relation notice that this relation is an equation of a plane okay so so far we are trying to solve our system of second order differential equation purely by reasoning and and geometric arguments we see that this equation this linear dependence relation is nothing but the equation of a plane which passes through origin passing through through 0 0 0 right plus plus what we have is that x y z satisfies the holonomic constraint or it's it lies on the surface it lies on the surface of sphere it lies on the surface of sphere so which means that the points lie on the surface of sphere, the point also lies on a plane which passes through the origin which means that the points x, y, z. So, the conclusion is 
that the points x, y, z lies on the intersection of the sphere and the plane passing through the origin. Okay? Or so x, y, z lie on the plane plane passing through origin through origin and cutting the cutting the surface of the sphere the surface of the sphere right and that is only possible if x y z lie on the great circle lie on the great circle which is exactly the result that we have looked at in the previous discussion of uh, geodesics in 3D, right? So this is another approach of solving this problem by using a holonomic constraint. Okay, so I I I end my discussion on holonomic constraint, and then move on to our discussion of non-holonomic constraint optimization. We will see that non-holonomic constraint optimization is a more general situation. So non holonomic constraint right or we call this class of problem as the lagrange problems okay or the lagrange problems and let me just write down the basic statement of this constraint optimization so we want to determine the extrema we want to determine the extrema of the functional j of q bar which is integral from t0 to t1 l of t comma q bar comma q bar dot dt uh, we call this relation as a1 subject to subject to the boundary condition j q bar of t0 is q bar not and q bar of t1 is q bar 1 let me call this condition as a2 and and further uh, and the constraint and the constraint 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 of the form constraint of the form uh, g of t comma q bar comma q bar dot is equal to 0 right let me call this constraint as denote this by a3 okay now i am going to show that this class of constraint problems are a very is a very general class in fact the the class of isoperimetric problem is a subset of this class the class of problems where we look at uh, the generalized case of uh, euler lagrange equations with functions having higher order derivative is also a function of this class is also uh, a subset of this class and so on so forth so this class is quite general so what i am going to show is that uh, in fact our class of isoperimetric problems could also be posed as a class of non holonomic problems so isoperimetric problems problems are a subset of lagrange problems lagrange problems okay and how so, which means that my integral constraint can be posed as a differential constraint. So, so to show that, let me consider the integral constraint in isoperimetric problem. So, consider the constraint of the form i q which is integral from t 0 to t 1 of g of t comma q bar comma q bar dot d t. Okay? This is equal to L, right? where my where my q bar is a vector of the form q1 q2 qn and to pose this integral constraint as a differential constraint we introduce a new variable we introduce introduce a new variable qn plus 1 by the relation qn plus 1 is equal to the integrand of the constraint 
g of t comma q bar comma q bar dot this is also equal to this is equal to 0 right. So, introduce a new variable q n plus 1 by the constraint q n plus 1 dot is equal to 0 right. How does this help our situation? Uh, if which means that notice that if we integrate this quantity then integral of q bar integral of q n plus 1 dot will be q n plus 1 from t 0 t 1 to t naught which will be. So, integral of this left hand side will be. So, let me finish the statement and then it is quite easy to see. So, along with along with the boundary condition along with the boundary condition along with the boundary condition that q n plus 1 t naught q n plus 1 t 1 such that the boundary condition is q n plus 1 t 1 minus q n plus 1 t naught is equal to n. So, this is my boundary condition satisfied by the new variable and how does this help our cause? Notice that we now if we integrate this boxed relation, this relation well, well, let me call this, this is the relation that we have. So, if we integrate this boxed relation, we see that the left hand side of the integral will be q n plus 1 at t 1 minus q n plus 1 at t naught and that is equal to L from the boundary condition that we have posed and the right hand side is the integral given by the isoperimetric constraint. So, now instead of using this constraint, if we use this particular constraint, then the problem is identical. But in so, the first constraint is an integral constraint and the second constraint is a differential constraint. So, the isoperimetric problems are a subset of Lagrange problems. So, we could have, uh, so the Lagrange problem discusses all classes of isoperimetric problems as well. Next, let, let us also look at the problems involving higher order derivatives. So, problems involving, involving two or more two or higher order derivatives order order derivatives derivatives in the integrand in the integrand ok. So, we are talking about the functionals of the following form j of y is equal to integral integral from x 0 to x 1 of f of x comma y comma y prime comma y double prime d of x right. So, how about this class of problems? Notice that if we introduce new sets of variable, so we are going to introduce variables of the form new variables t is equal to x, we introduce q 1 is equal to y, we introduce q 2 is equal to y prime right. So, here it means it means that q 1 prime is equal to q 2 right, q 1 prime is equal to q 2. So, then so, so this is this is a condition which is our non holonomic non holonomic constraint ok. So, this is our non holonomic constraint and now notice how my integral my functional reduces to my functional j of y now is j of q bar which is now integral from t 0 to t 1 of f of t comma uh, y, y was t comma q 1 comma q 2 and the last variable y double prime is nothing but q 2 prime ok. So, now we have reduced our function we have reduced our function which is the integrand of this functional originally dependent on uh, functions up to second derivative to now dependent of on functions up to first derivative with the additional non holonomic constraints right. So, so it now we can see that the higher order derivative problems are also 
these two are equivalent are also a subclass of Lagrange problems. 